So Pat, we've got a lot of great looking parts here and every one of these units is kind of unique to itself. So each one of them has um, certain adjustments that can be made. So why don't we look at a couple of those uh, adjustments in detail now. Okay, Matt, well the first adjustment you're going to need to get familiar with is what's called the ring height setting. And each of these units has a hole on top of the cover, you can see that we use to measure down from the top of the cover ring, top of the cover down to the pressure ring. That's the installed height of the clutch. On a red hat unit like this, it'd be one inch, 950 thousandths. Um, uh, the billet 10 inch long, it's actually on the cover, it's 1.725 inches. And then on a low pro unit, it's 850 thousandths. Uh, if you take a dial caliper and you actually measure down through the hole on the unit, you can get that measurement and set that ring height correctly. Now, to set the ring height on these units, the red hat and the billet long use a, a round shim stack underneath the cover assembly to achieve that height. So it's not going to be exactly right on. It's going to be plus or minus five thousandths when you set that height. And typically you're going to set it to the low side. On the billet low pro units, they actually have an adjustable stand. It's a, it's a barrel that's threaded onto the stand base. And you can run that up and down to get that height exactly onto the thousandths. We actually use a little dial indicator to what we call zero the clutch out to get that to the precise position. Now the ring height is very important to maintain at that installed height. When you set that up initially, that's going to give you your, your set base pressure that you start with and it's going to control the position of the lever and that's going to control how much clamping force it does. As the clutch disc wears, that ring height number is going to get larger. So if the clutch disc wears 5, 10, 15, 20 thousandths, you're going to want to compensate for that. Of course on the low pro units, we're a little more fine tuning with that adjustment, so we may do that a little bit more frequently to get that dial back in. But by keeping that lever and spring pressure in its optimum position all the time, we're going to be much more consistent on the racetrack. So that really is the key to the ring height, is really consistency, because as the, as the clutch wears, ultimately the, the levers move, um, it changes pretty much the whole makeup of the clutch and the way it's ultimately going to be able to clamp. So the ring height is really very, very important. Well, it's important not only just for maintaining the lever position uh, to, to act the same as far as clamping, but also it, it maintains your release bearing clearance, so you don't lose release bearing clearance and unload the clutch uh, prematurely. So. Clutch tuning science, the more consistent you are with your setup, the more you maintain and keep it clean, keep everything dialed in, the more consistent your car is going to be. So why don't we talk about two of the um, other key factors that I think everybody really has a lot of questions on, and that is the clamping uh, adjustments of the, of the units, the base and the counterweight, so to say. Why don't we talk about that a little bit and how they get adjusted? Okay, so the clamping adjustment for the base pressure, each of these units has a adjuster over each of the, the six springs in them. The red hat and the 10 inch built long have an adjuster where you turn it counterclockwise to increase that pressure. You can turn it a turn, this unit adjusts at 15 pounds per turn. And what that's doing is as you turn each of those um, adjustments, you're actually increasing the pressure onto the pressure ring which is giving you more holding power. Now this base pressure is linear. It's going to be a constant across the whole RPM range. So it's not going to affect anything. If you add 100 pounds of base pressure, it's 100 pounds at any RPM. When we move into the counterweight adjustments, those are a little different. They use these little sets of weights or nuts and bolts to create counterweight to, and did, to add to the clamp pressure of the lever as an engine spinning. So it's going to be more dynamic. It's going to accelerate and clamp harder at higher RPM. So by adding just a few grams to the end of this lever, we can tremendously affect the holding power of the clutch. And as that engine that RPM accelerates up to the shift point, it's going to keep the clutch nice and tight, locked up on the gear change, and hopefully not too much that you can make a nice smooth run. So a very small adjustment there can really make a big difference in a run. Something like um, we talk about a gram or two or three grams um, might not sound like a lot, but really can make the difference between a, uh, an okay run and a great run. It definitely is going to make or break the whole run, particularly on these single disc systems. Um, you know, keeping the clutch locked up in high gear and making that strong charge towards the finish line is very important, but we don't want to have so much on there that we, you know, not, do not make smooth shifts in the first few years. So as, as usual, attention to detail is really paramount with any of these units, whether it's the, the shim style adjustment on the red hat and the 10-inch billet or the, the nicely adjustable stands that make it a little bit easier. Um, obviously, attention to detail is paramount for uh, maximum performance. Exactly. And then the other thing we really didn't touch on either that affects the units tremendously, tremendously is the launch RPM. Okay. Um, you know, being a racer yourself, you know being out there on the racetrack when it's 120 degrees, traction's a little bit at a, at, a, at a premium, so you have to be careful. So lowering the launch RPM is going to make the car a little, leave a little easier, a little smoother. But as that track cools down in those evening hours and, and starts the temperature drops, uh, the traction is going to go way up and you need to be on top of that by raising the launch RPM and get that tire accelerating.
that is an important point because so often we forget that um, again the clutch is very RPM sensitive so something as little as a hundred or or 150 RPM could really make the difference of the way the car or the clutch uh, leaves the starting line initially because of the initial clamp load of the unit very very much so